How's it going everyone? I got quite a bit to talk about in this video. Some news that I think potentially is gonna be a little bit worrying to some of you guys in terms of what Ben Studio has been working on. Ben Studio has been MIA for quite a while. Days Gone came out all the way back in early 2019, I believe it was April of 2019, May of 2019, around that range. And it looks like they're gearing up for a style of game that maybe you guys aren't gonna be too excited about. So we'll talk about that. Now before we get into this video, I just wanna ask you guys, please like this video and do leave a comment with your thoughts. It really does help out the channel a lot and it is much appreciated. Let's talk Sony first party dev, Ben Studios, who has been MIA for quite a while in terms of revealing their next title. They are looking to staff up for a AAA live service title. And this latest news comes uh, through the studio thanks to Eurogamer with the recruitment advert posted in the company's website. Ben is seeking a lead project manager capable of doing things like manage project scope based on current team velocities and milestone schedules and hands-on game development experience in leadership roles of shipping AAA live service games. More specifically, that the person should have a track record of redefining studios from traditional box product focused game development into live service development studios in a key leadership role. Essentially, taking a studio that had been doing games that were more traditional titles like A Day's God and altering that game design and game workflow in terms of creating a AAA live service game. That literally sounds like the most horrifying thing imaginable to most PlayStation fans. Now, let's be honest. Live service immediately does not mean that a game is going to be bad. We just saw Helldivers 2 come out, guys. Helldivers 2 was great. However, at the same time, we have seen so many games trying to adapt into a live service model that have been disasters. Helldivers 2 gets a lot of notoriety and a lot of attention, but let's be frank here, it is the exception, not the rule. You know what other games have just come out recently that adopted a live service model? Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League and Skull and Bones. How about you guys go look at how those games are being received, how those games are doing commercially? Yes, we all know what the game plan here is. You wanna chase that dragon, you wanna chase that proverbial gravy train that other games have established. Helldivers 2 has seemingly established that. Still a little bit too early to say that for sure in terms of the long term, but pretty confident in saying that Helldivers 2 is going to be a decent little money maker. Uh, there are other games that have been decent little money makers. Your Apex Legends, your uh, Fortnites of the world, League of Legends, Final Fantasy 14. These games have become live service behemoths in terms of generating revenue, and a game like that popping off for a Sony obviously would mean a lot in terms of how successful those games could be. However, when you think about Sony Ben Studio, they have very much been of the ilk of doing that PlayStation style of experience that so many of you guys know and love. Now, Days Gone was certainly their first big budget, so to speak, uh, AAA gaming experience on the PlayStation 4, and Days Gone also was a game I know a lot of people really did love that game. I know a lot of people are fiending for a sequel, the petitions and everything like that. But in-house at Sony, I know that they also deemed that game to be a disappointment for whatever reason, whether it be the commercial performance of the game, the Metacritic scores, whatever the reasoning is, they deemed that game to be a little bit of a disappointment, and it looks like Days Gone 2 won't come to fruition. Uh, Days Gone is a game that I thought was quite good. I thought it had a lot to like, and I thought a foundation for something to develop into a franchise was there. But uh, some things did hold it back, uh, hold it back, I should say. Performance issues, I thought, were noticeable, especially on the PlayStation 4. This game, Days Gone, legitimately a far better experience on the PlayStation 5 as well as PC. The PC version's great. And then there were some issues as far as content goes, but uh, a sequel could have developed into something much bigger. But given that this was Ben Studios' first foray into a AAA game, maybe they are the studio that's looked at as, hey, they can be more of a guinea pig to divert from what made them so big because Days Gone was really their first foray into that. They did some other games, an Uncharted Golden Abyss, Siphon Filter titles here and there, 
I believe they worked on Resistance Retribution, uh, a lot of portable games, you know, games that, uh, while they were very good, they weren't of the scale of a Days Gone, and they weren't established like a Santa Monica, like a Naughty Dog for doing a certain style of experience. Those that were familiar with what Ben Studios put out obviously did like their titles, but they weren't established as much as some of the other premier Sony studios, so I can understand why, from Sony's lens, they're looking at the studios that they have in-house, and they would point to a Ben Studio being like, hey, we gave you Days Gone, it didn't turn out entirely uh, what we envisioned it to be, and maybe those uh, visions were a little bit, you know, too big of a reach for every studio to hit, and they're like, okay, you guys now have the knowledge of doing a big budget AAA title, take that knowledge and parlay it into a live service game. I can understand from that logic and that thinking point of being like, okay, Ben Studios is going to be the ones to helm a AAA live service game. For me, it's obviously not what I ideally want. I want Ben Studio, even if it's going to be not as big budget as a Days Gone, I think we can scale their games back down and they could do some pretty cool double A titles. I think that's not something that would be too crazy and something that could do very, very well. Um, but it's just obviously, even though the live service gravy train that Sony is obviously fiending for, um, their plans are changing as far as that's concerned. We saw it with studio closures. We've seen it with some of these games getting canceled. It has been a little bit of a disaster, and I don't think that's too big of a stretch to say that the live service plan that PlayStation had in place was a little bit of a disaster. Look at the 2023 release year for Sony First Party. Not good whatsoever. 2024, looking terrible for First Party. Um... And a big reason for that is I truly do believe that a lot of these studios were working on their live service projects and either they got canned, either they got delayed, whatever the deal is, I don't know, but I do think that delayed the development of the games that the core PlayStation audience did want to see. Days Gone came out all the way back in 2019. If Ben Studio, right after Days Gone came out, started work on Days Gone 2, I would imagine that it would be out in 2024. It would be a five-year turnaround, much like Horizon Forbidden West, five years. God of War Ragnarok, four and a half years. Oh, Days Gone, if Ben Studio was working on another AAA title, if they had another swing at working on a game like this instead of shifting into a live service game, I don't know. I feel like they would have had their game out by now, and it has been a long time for Ben Studios to put out a game, and I do think when you shift into doing something that maybe you're not as familiar to do, like a live service project, that is going to delay the development of the game, and it's going to take longer, and there's going to be hurdles you have to overcome. Instead of building upon that foundation that Ben had in place with Days Gone, and maybe it would have streamlined into development, and they could have continued to make something better. I'm not saying they would have even had to do Days Gone 2. Maybe Days Gone wasn't going to be this massive IP, and if Days Gone 1 didn't light the world on fire, it would be hard for a follow-up title to do much better, especially because if the thinking would be you have to play Days Gone 1 and play Days Gone 2, I get it. I get it why they wouldn't want to do a Days Gone 2, um, but a single-player, AAA, non-live service game? I, I feel like there was a foundation they could have built on based on what they did with Days Gone. But for now, it seems like live service is where they're going to go, and it's a little bit of a bummer because this is one studio uh, in Sony's first party that I do feel like the live service element of it all has delayed their production. I don't know the ins and outs of what they've been working on. Last we heard from Ben, I believe they just put out a statement like, we're still cooking or something like that. So we'll see how this turns out. Hopefully, it ends up being a quality title. Uh, but yeah, the live service element is always going to worry me a little bit. That'll do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, sound off there. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.